Welcome back to the Gnome Show, everyone. I am Josh, your humble host, and it is my duty, nay, my pleasure, to bring or to trawl the briny depths of YouTube so that I may bring you the shinies. Uh, I cover short films of varying genres, video games, analog horror and sci-fi, and anything else that I think is groovy. I hope that you'll enjoy tonight's offering, content for the blood god. <clears throat> I mean, on with the show. And for tonight's show, um, I do have a very uh, nice shiny for you. Um, we have looked at Shan Clan Shadow Productions before uh, when uh, they uh, uh, graciously discussed um, their... Um, views on uh skinwalkers uh you know uh, and you know like things from their point of view uh because you know western media has all their own things and what they get from movies and uh uh secondhand uh information and uh bastardized legends or what have you uh, and uh you know it's just refreshing to get another point of view uh and tonight um we're going to get um another point of view on um aliens um from a uh an indig indigenous uh point of view um so uh without further ado let's boogie Yeah, we kind of knew aliens were real all along. It's behind! That's from a movie. Uh, it's always that. It's always that. It's always that. I it. thought I was hitting the brakes. Ah, aliens! Uh, no, no, we don't have to go through insurance, do we? <laughs> oh, not. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Sean Clinton Shadow Productions. And I just want to say Happy New Year to you all. This is going to be the first episode of 2024, so I'm super excited about this one. So us indigenous people for a very, very long time have really known about extraterrestrial beings, aliens, or sky people, or I don't know, there's so many different names out there for them and all that for this, but yeah, we've, we've kind of known about this stuff for a good while now, and there's a lot of teachings and a lot of stories about beings that come from the sky, beings that come from the, the star nation as well. And now it really depends on which <laughs> tribe you come from, on how the stories are told when it comes to extraterrestrial beings or sky people uh, or beings of the star nation. And when it comes to aliens, it really goes hand in hand with a lot of spirituality stuff. In our in our teachings and in our ways, aliens and extraterrestrial beings are, in a sense, <laughs> spiritual beings that come down from the heavens to be able to grant us knowledge or teachings. And one really cool story that I always like to tell when it comes to aliens is one that was told from my great grandmother's perspective. This one right here is really cool because my great grandmother she was somebody that never went to school she grew up in the time and the age of when boarding schools was a big thing and they they would go and kind of round up people and take them over to boarding schools and all that but her father wanted to keep her home to be able to learn the traditional way she never learned to spoke, speak english so she, he ended up hiding her in the canyons whenever the BIA or anybody else would kind of come around to collect the kids to take them to residential schools. Fuck, that's hardcore. Now, what's really interesting is the lifestyle that my great-grandmother had. There was no electricity, there was no running water, so they didn't have outside influences as far as for when it came to aliens in their time and their day. So with this story, that just kind of makes this story really even pop a little bit more for me. So her story was one night she woke up and then she was she was looking around the walking around the house and she looked out the window one night and how she describes it in Navajo is there was a dish that came down from the sky and went into the canyons and she asked her father she was just like what is that what's that over there and her father replied he said those are the sky people those are the star people he says that we have our teachings and our ceremonies but whenever they come down like that you don't mess with them you let them do what they're supposed to do and you, they, they take off from there. So she was very, very kind of intrigued by this. So she went out the next day to that area where it was 
and there was a burnt circle around in a specific spot but inside of that burnt circle there was little tiny herbs that were kind of blossoming they were blooming inside of that burnt circle so he always told her that when they come down they come down for medicines and herbs and when they leave they leave offerings like that more herbs in replacement of the ones that they took uh, for them to grow strong and grow good and everything like that so that right there was really interesting to be able to hear that from my great grandmother and her stories about that and there's there's a lot of stories when it comes to the star nation and the star people how some tribes descend from those places how they came onto this earth and different tribes will have their origin stories of how they came to this world but it's it's very interesting to be able to see even here in the phoenix area there's some tribes over in south mountain that uh, would make petroglyphs on top of some rocks and they would depict beings that would come from the sky and go inside of the mountain and how they would they would tell stories about the extraterrestrials would sing a song and the mountain would open up itself and they would go inside of there and when they were done they would shoot back out and everything so there have been a lot of extraterrestrial sightings around south mountain pretty sure yeah so uh maybe like uh like the i mean that is an interesting thing uh you know that you would in an uh, in in old and in old times, like you know, the aliens would come down and they'd see these, um, these uh, probably to them. Uh, well, I don't know what they would they would see these people and um, uh, maybe they would be cognizant of the uh, you know of the you know the natives of the planet and maybe they did do these kinds of things where like what they took they would give back in some way or some fashion or by natural order what they uh when they came and took they would leave byproduct or like you know like what they their presence would be beneficial for like the environment around them that's really fucking interesting um Maybe it's a uh, uh, maybe that particular form of energy when like you know like they hover above the ground or uh, when they do investigations or something. That's just very interesting. That's 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 cool. You guys have seen like the Phoenix Lights videos, mm -hmm. and especially with the U.S. government showing out and actually confirming that aliens are actually real. Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody out there already knew. Like, yeah, we we kind of knew, man, that there's. You know, something out there and when it comes to these beings and everything they are in a sense of the spiritual world at least in the indigenous eyes they are extraterrestrial beings that can go in and out whenever they please and they're very very powerful and very very knowledgeable in their travels in the star nation in the star world now when it comes to star people and everything it, it i can't generally say that all aliens are star people uh, we do have different teachings about like specifically extraterrestrials are a branch of star people or star nation and there's so many different stories when it comes to that but I don't think I'm able to really tell that it I guess I could tell you this little part where when it comes to the star nation and star people when humans pass on at least in our tribe uh, you go into the star world, you go, you make that journey along the Milky Way to be able to relive your life, learn how to become a spirit after you pass away to be able to go into the happy hunting grounds. So when it comes to that, the stars and everything have their own stories. And what's really interesting, I'll tell you this little story, is one of our sacred deities was placing up the stars in a very meticulous way. And kind of like how everybody has like Orion's belt and all these other astrological deities that form in the sky based off the star formations we have ours too they have their own different names and everything like that but when this deity was placing the stars into the sky they were placing it very meticulously then there's another being that came up while they were doing that and it was coyote coyote came up and asked like hey can i go ahead and help you out with this and deity said yeah you can go ahead and help me out so when they were placing it coyote got upset he's like this is taking too long so all the stars that were placed onto the blanket, Coyote grabbed it and just threw it up into the sky. 
and they just mashed up everywhere in there. So that's like a little quick coyote tale how he's a trickster. trickster. Coyotes aren't all evil. He has his stories in the creation of this world and everything. So, but yeah, going back to extraterrestrials and aliens, some of my personal experiences that I've had is crazy lights in the sky. I remember when I was, I would have to say back in junior high, we lived kind of in a rural area. So the stars in the sky were kind of very bright. It's not like how you see in the city where it's a lot of light pollution and pollution in the sky to where you can't really see the stars. But we're outside playing like Nerf gun war and everything. And we're just <laughs> young kids and we were playing. And all of a sudden we saw like a bright green light show up in the sky right above us. And we look and then it shot off toward the west. And when it got toward the horizon, it stopped. And then it shot straight up into the sky really quick. And we're just like, Mom! (laughs) 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 We started freaking out and everything like that. So it's, it's, it's very, very interesting to kind of see that. And especially with the US government themselves, having seen extraterrestrial beings or unknown phenomena ufos or uaps i guess they call it now on their electrical devices on the jets on their sonars and radars and everything like that it's it's honestly really interesting to see that and when it comes to the star people and everything there's a lot of crazy stories and theories in my noggin right here that they come down every so often to give us knowledge to give us teachings about how to live and how to grow as far as a society and everything and in my mind in my theory they're the ones that kind of help teach humanity a lot of different things and if you guys have seen my live stream with my sisters earlier this new year yes i'll be posting some of those highlight clips on there on my channel as well it's pretty interesting for me to think about this because there's a lot of stories about the anunnaki the gods and deities that came from the heavens and they taught humans how to build and taught humans how to do all these different things but then catastrophes happened and they ended up losing a lot of their knowledge and their teachings so i would always think about these nations i would always think about these civilizations these empires that kind of ruled and you would see like these hidden temples hidden pyramids hidden cities that were lost thousands and thousands of years ago and there's no record of them what's pretty crazy is i saw on tiktok not too long ago about a story of there was a, a pyramid that was found underneath the water near cuba and it used to have cities a temple and all these different things but no one really knew where it came from a lot of people are speculating that it's atlantis but you really think about it this world has been here for countless number of years and there's different civilizations that have lived in on this earth in a certain time period it always makes me wonder like what if there was another civilization that was like us that it was at a certain point where we are right now as far as for technology if not even greater than what we have now and what if they were the ones that actually learned how to have spaceships to go into the next worlds and travel the galaxy like that and just haven't returned yet or think about it like this is what if there was a civilization that went down a different path of using energy on this world what if they went a more natural way instead of like digging into the ground getting fossil fuels and all these different things to be able to produce energy what if they went like because there's some scientists out there that talk about evolutions of the humanity and how they have these different stages of where humanity could go as far as for advancing the world that we live in now and there's this one part that's very interesting to me is how they collect energy is they learn how to collect energy from i guess we we do that partially from solar and wind but and also ocean waves as well they use dams and you they use water reservoirs and everything in those theories that they learn how to harness the energy of earthquakes they learn to harness the energies of tsunamis tornadoes and all these different things that were considered catastrophes but then they ended up learning how to be one with the earth and use those energies in itself so in those old civilizations what if they went down that path first instead of the path that we chose what if they went down those worlds and kind of like how we have technology here to be able to record all these different things that we have if your camera dies if your phone dies if your computer dies all the stuff is just plastic 
over time, this is all going to decay. It's all going to go away. And without the knowledge of learning how to power these things, you have no way to access all this knowledge. You have no way to access all these teachings. So say a world catastrophe were to happen and say like an EMP or all these different things, the only thing that would be left would be the structures and not really sure what would happen to the people whether that be they went to the they took to the stars or they just survived one way right here but then it would in, in a sense send you back into the stone age and i don't know for a lot of you people out there i don't know how to make this i don't know how to make wi-fi i don't know how to make computers or all these different things motherboards or anything like that so in a sense, a lot of people would be starting from the Stone Age period again to be able to learn how to gather resources, be able to learn how to build these things and start all over. So that makes me think like when we think about human history, we only go back a couple thousand years. But what was there before then? Were humans there before then? Were there other civilizations that were there before then? Before even all this other stuff that happened. So that's pretty interesting and the thing that kind of happened that I think about sometimes, it keeps me up at night, I have to be honest, just kidding. But when it comes to like extraterrestrial beings and star nation and star beings, this world was created a long, long time ago and even back before even written history that we have. So it just leaves that open gap of when it was created to when we started recording things, what happened in between that time period and did aliens or extraterrestrial beings have an influence on the humanity when it came to building empires and civilizations. But going back to it, indigenous people, yes, we do believe in aliens. We do have stories and sightings and we have them recorded on petroglyphs too. Uh, we have um, pictures of what they look like and it's, it's pretty, it's pretty gnarly to think about it, but yeah. So do I think aliens will ever come back? Yes, but I honestly think like if I were an extraterrestrial being, if you were an extraterrestrial being and you were scouring the universe and the galaxies and everything for life and everything, you would have to look at the civilization itself. And would it be profitable for you to be able to trade with these people, to give them your technology and teachings and all that, and pretty much where their mindset's at? And I feel like at least me in my opinion i feel like we're getting closer to the point of where we're starting to awaken ourselves we're starting to be more open-minded with a lot of things and i have to thank technology for that for opening up the avenues for people i think it might be because we're um <clears throat> so if i were an alien and i were waiting for uh the right time to either strike or uh, approach um, it would depend on what I want like so like if they're if they've been visiting us for a long time and they haven't like you know completely just like uh, kept us from doing anything sig significant um, then I would imagine that especially now since like we're in the first stages of being uh how you doing you <clears throat> how you doing new viewer we're in the first the first stages of being a spacefaring so uh, society you know where we're looking up at the stars and not just like you know like being like golly gee one day um you know we're making steps toward that future um especially with the advent of like uh, uh, drone technology in a meaningful way um, like being able to send uh, large craft uh, into space uh, that's either autonomous or autonomous me uh, autonomously controlled so that you um, like well you you need even more to uh, make sure your craft are safe <coughs> but even more so you can automate your um your trip into space um but really in my opinion we won't be a spacefaring uh, race until we can build craft in space uh, so we don't need necessarily have to get ourselves into space uh before we can go anywhere 
so you can save like all that propellant for um, uh, the actual trip and not just getting out of the atmosphere. Um, but I would say aliens are waiting for us to be capable of spacefaring, like a, you know, like a, a a species willing to look beyond its own selfish concerns. And I don't mean like end all war and like that, but like you know, we're to the point where we have a vision. Uh, you know, that we want to explore and we want to be serious about exploring. Uh, um, and, and especially if we're the only ones in our neighborhood for now, I mean, you know, we might as well uh, explore our neighborhood, uh, you know, like you would do when you were a child and you went out and explored your neighborhood on your bike and you know, went to another neighborhood and maybe uh, went on the golf course and saw where the woods were and, you know, like, um, you know, found patches of land that were undeveloped and uh, full of wonder. And there's animals and bugs and snakes and things that are gross and, you know, bodies of water that you've never seen you know, uh, or... Uh, completely new phenomena that you've never seen before that's what we do so um why not explore uh this vast neighborhood of ours um really um become masters of it especially if we want to travel beyond although um it would be nice if we could <clears throat> stop the burning on our own planet uh before we start um uh, terraforming the rest of the uh, the the, the uh, solar system. Um, <clears throat> although by the time I'm seventy, I might be like, you know, Mars doesn't sound like a bad place to die. How about it, Miss Ashante? How do you like Mars, or maybe just the moon? I've heard they have great Wi-Fi on the moon. <laughs> we can get that murder show you like so much. It'll never go out. We get the best view in the whole system. And, uh, you know, maybe not as cold. <laughs> you know, Mars is still coming along these days. It's just a small colony looks more like a like a small city than anything else maybe maybe you know it's getting there but it's not really that much right now uh, it's quite alone they don't have much grass yet <laughs> all right back to it we'll learn different customs different ways different mindsets and different ways of thinking and that's one way reason why i started this channel is to just get people thinking about different things a different perspective on life spirituality and everything so who knows maybe soon maybe this year 2024 aliens will show up and all that so i'm pretty sure whatever scenario we have if they want boy oh the day fucking aliens really show up the day they really fucking like make a uh, make planet fall <sighs> there are gonna be a lot of really fucking upset people <laughs> like really like there's gonna be a lot of upset people and maybe not like i don't know like it's gonna be fucking crazy or i'm pretty sure we're screwed if they do but we have movies to help us out with that war of the worlds yes yes we'll just get them sick and everything <laughs> so that's gonna be it for this episode you guys yes indigenous people do believe in aliens so uh, if you guys were ever questioning that, yes, we do have stories about them. I don't know too many of them, but I'm on the journey to learn more from my elders as much as I can. And maybe I'll share some of those with you in the future. Please do, um, sir. But thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Check out my social medias at Sean Clen Shadow Productions. Official Sean Clen SSP on Instagram. That's where pretty much I spend out most of my time uh, for all the updates coming up in my channel. So again, Happy New Year, everybody. You all stay safe. Have a great year. And I'll see you in the next one. I'll go net. Nice. I approve.
groove of the hat. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> that was uh, the uh, uh, perspective of, um, and I said I think he said he was Navajo, um, um, but uh, also indigenous. Um, um, but uh, that is uh, his perspective uh, on uh, aliens. Um, I, I didn't think there was any doubt whether uh, um, indigenous peoples would believe in aliens. Uh, they've probably been recording them for longer than we have. Uh, you know, look over the sky and just, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave them alone. <laughs> um, sound off in the comments uh, uh, what you think. Uh, I've been reading some of the other comments. Uh, some uh, some of you are very strongly opinionated about it, and that's cool. Um, you know, uh, aliens is a pretty um, uh, rousing subject to talk about, um, and. Um, many, many cultures, um, have a very <clears throat> deep and profound connection, uh, to, uh, their land, their traditions, uh, the way they communicate information across the generations, uh, um, the way they, uh, communicate knowledge and uh, uh, impertinent facts about life uh, and teachings in a way that, uh, you know, the, can be understood. Um, they're very important, and everybody has different ways of doing that. Um, so um, some of you, uh, you know, have uh you know like i would say western tradition uh western views on things um you're they're just like there's there's so many more viewpoints uh than yours um and they are much you know just as valid so remember that guys um but uh um <clears throat> Tell me about your uh, uh, traditions uh, and uh, views on aliens. If you're from uh, a non-Western culture or... Uh, hey, what's up, brother? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's a, um, uh, It's going to be like that. And welcome, brother. How you doing tonight? Um, I don't think... At, well, I can't say that. Because, uh, like, um, I mean, it probably wouldn't be too spectacular. You would probably have, like, a, a landing craft or a delegation craft or something like that. Something that would be um, non-threatening. Um, you know, something that wouldn't immediately be shot down. Um, by planetary defenses from many nations. Um, but, uh, like, maybe. I mean, I, I really think... It's like, okay, so it would be like, uh, it would be like JC coming back. You know what I'm saying? Like, it would absolutely fucking rock the foundations of the world. And I think it would be the same thing for me, for aliens making planet fall. Um, you know, whether it was like a an, uh, a non-threatening landing craft uh, with a statesman uh, in it, or uh, um, a Saiyan, or like you know one of the uh, one of the landing pods from uh, from uh, Dragon Ball Z. Um, uh, rest in peace, uh, Kira Toriyama. Uh, we will miss you. Um, uh, or, you know, a warship, uh, um, in orbit that you can see from the ground. Like, you know, like you don't see star stars, you see a fucking warship, you know, like it would be 
super profound. Like, I think it would change everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, you would uh, have, like, some some affirmations of uh, certain beliefs, and you would have the breaking of others. Uh, you know, like, certain certainties would be stripped away. Um, uh, views of, like, uh, the, the center of things would be wiped clean. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, like when we figured out that uh, we weren't the center of the universe uh, or our solar system, you know, that we were just, uh, 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 you know, orbiting uh, the sun. And then, you know, like, you know, then there's a wider universe around it, like, you know, the smallness of it, you know, people would, re you know, I think that's where the existential dread would really start to st set in. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh my God, there's so much out here, and and and, um, what is it? Um, you know nothing, Jon Snow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, our species knows nothing again. Uh, welcome to the fucking planetary alliance or the 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 universal um, uh, neighborhood association. <laughs> Uh, it would, you know, like that would the best outcome probably would be like a studying of each other's cultures. That would be the best outcome. Like you would hope that's the way it would go. Um, because there are certain theories out there um, that are absolutely terrifying. Uh, like the heat death of the universe. Um, you know, like, uh, like <clears throat> remember that, um, I don't know. Uh, do you remember that one we watched where it was like, um, uh, the last guy, uh, or the last, um, um, well of, of souls or whatever left in the universe, uh, trying to, to, uh, or basically witnessing the death of the universe because the energy is fading, like, you know, power, uh, everything in the universe is fading, getting ready to, uh, just, uh, fizzle out and go dark completely until, uh, I guess the new universe starts with a bang because of, uh, the f whatever thermal dynamics or all like, you know, you know, whatever happens with the big bang. Uh, but, uh, yeah, like, uh, like I would imagine like you would want to do th something about, uh, maybe those eventualities, uh, make a better go of things. I don't know. Or maybe we would just want to eat us or we would end up going to war with them or we would eat them. Uh, what if it turned out that they, you know, we were the more powerful species, uh, you know, we just yanked their shit and uh, said, ha ha, that was cool. Next. Uh, uh, that would be terrifying, but on point for humanity, I guess. So, um that uh, was uh, exploring the is the existence of aliens perspectives from indigenous indigenous teachings. Man, I am tired tonight. <clears throat> like, subscribe, and share, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one, um, and I will see you in the next one. All right, all right.